Yo everybody, I just want to point out real quick before the video starts that uh, this video was actually recorded on two separate dates last month in March, um, but due to the fact that I have a horrible internet service provider that has an incredibly obscenely low bandwidth limit per month, um, I couldn't actually upload it until now, so just keep that in mind as you watch the video. Other than that, enjoy, and uh, roll the title sequence! I'm Sam Lisney, I'm at work, and it's time for an impromptu Transformers video review. I know I'm a little late to the party on this one. Okay, very late to the party on this one. But uh, considering where I live, even having this is a bloody miracle. Just got it today. With the help of my handy screen wiping tool, you will see Generation Cybertronian Soundwave. I haven't even opened this guy yet. It uh, just, I, I got it while, I'm, while I was at work today. Uh, one of my friends handed it to me as a, as a late Christmas present. So uh, without further ado, let's, let, let's crack him open. Ta-da! Magic how I did that, eh? All right, let's take a look at the figure itself. Starting in robot mode, since that's how the figure came packaged. Here is Soundwave in his Cybertronian mode as seen in the uh, War for Cybertron video game. Uh, one of the first things I noticed, he has very large feet, which is okay, it helps him stand up. Um, his chest opens up. You're probably not going to be able to fit any laser beaks, rebels, or frenzies or anything else in there. But uh, I believe it's actually storage for his weaponry. These right here. Got a very sound wave esque face right there. You, know, you can clearly tell who it's supposed to be, especially considering his uh, choice of weaponry. <clears throat> um, got a very uh, decent articulation going on here. Got a ball joint for the shoulder with a uh, swivel. Swivel there. Single hinge for the elbow, but it uh, allows him to punch himself right in the shoulder. Um, waist doesn't turn. Ball joint, swivel. Uh, so that's a decent knee. Uh, feet are on a ball joint. That's, uh, that's pretty good. So he's pretty poseable. He looks pretty cool. Um, notice a few things that I would uh, I would fix, or rather I will fix, I guess. Um, the first one being, you can clearly see on the arm here where this uh, silver stripe is supposed to continue on, and uh, it doesn't. So I'm probably going to find myself repainting that. Um, also. On the head, I like my sound waves to have these little uh, vents here, silver or white, just like uh, in the G1 cartoon, so I'll probably be painting that as well. I'm not a big fan of uh, silver Decepticon logos, or even just borderless Decepticon logos, so I'm probably going to be throwing a, a Reaper label sticker on there if I can find the, uh, the right size. Other than that, though, he's uh, pretty fantastically sound wave. Uh, I'm going to try transforming him now for the first time uh, without looking at the instructions, so bear with me. I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, I'm probably just going to fast forward through this part. And that's that's pretty much it. That's that's vehicle mode right there. 
Um, not too much to say about them. It's, it's you know it's a box of wheels. Uh, wheels roll really really nicely though. Uh, it's got some good detail going on. Like um, these spikes wound up on the on the front of the vehicle mode, which is pretty great. You can adjust where you want them to sit. I of course uh, opt for sticking straight out because really he's a Decepticon. He might want to like I don't know run into people and, and, and spike them. It's pretty good. Um, his weapons can plug into the sides of his vehicle mode here. Um, you know, for battling while driving. Uh, he's got the purple uh, purple highlights that are on his robot mode are strategically placed in vehicle mode to make him look like he's trying to be something out of Tron. Um, the ones on his knees actually wind up as sort of like tail lights and these bits become some nice rear vents on the vehicle. It's kind of cool. Uh, and of course, as previously mentioned, that was really cool, that landed right in my hand. Um, this opens up and acts as weapon storage. So yeah, all in all, pretty cool. It's uh, Generations War for Cybertron Soundwave. And uh, not bad for a figure that I just got at work. A quick update, as well as a uh, location change with Soundwave here. Um, as it may or may not be noticeable, I did those touch-ups that I said I was going to do earlier in the video. I uh, finished that silver line along his arm there. I replaced the uh, the silver Decepticon logo with a Reaper label sticker, uh, which actually created a pretty cool effect on the inside of the tape door here, where if you... if I can get it to look right... If you see, you can still see the silver logo underneath, but now it's got a purple border because of the backing of the sticker, making it kind of like uh, inverted, which is cool. Um, I've added silver along the outside of the vents on them here. That's actually a detail that I that uh, is on the United version of the figure, and um, I decided it would look really cool on this one, so I did that. And also, finally, up on the face here, like I said, silver vents on the side, just make him look a little more like Soundwave. I also filled in his mouth plate a bit better, so that uh, it's not just blue right on the top of it. And I realized that there's one other thing I forgot to get into with this figure, and that's his uh, his unofficial third mode, his, um, his Cybertronian boombox mode that people made for him after seeing him turn into one in the game. So uh, real quick, I'm going to transform him into that and show it off. And there it is. This is Soundwave in his Cybertronian boombox mode. Um, as far as, you know, fan modes go, there have been worse. Um, Obviously, it, uh, it loses a bit of its appeal when you turn it to the side and you see his arms hanging off the back like that. But, um, you know, for a figure that's not actually supposed to turn into this, that, that's pretty good. You know, it's not an exact replica of the mode in the game, but then again, they had a 3D model to work with, not a figure, so they could cheat. And that pretty much concludes my look at uh, Generations Cybertronian Soundwave. Um, for those of you looking for a recommendation on this figure, uh, if you don't already have one, get it. It's a fantastic deluxe class figure. It's a fantastic rendition of Soundwave. I mean, it's the first good Soundwave figure we've had since, what, Cybertron? And that one's, like, arguably a good Soundwave figure. I think before that was G1 Soundwave. So, yeah, anybody looking to add a Soundwave to their collection, specifically to, like, their, uh, you know, Neo G1 Classics type collections, get this guy. He is fantastic. I mean, obviously, I felt that mine needed a little bit of alteration to make it that much better, but I do that with all my toys, so, you know, bear with me on that one. And that's that's him. That's Generations Cybertronian Soundwave. Oh.